today I'm going to show you how to pull off the inner door panels on a 2015 to 2022 Chevy Colorado. Now I was asked by quite a few people on the process, obviously I've done this before for part of my audio installation when I had the kicker speakers I put in the door, but there's a number of reasons why you might need to gain access and I'm going to go through the basic process. The door I'm going to be using is going to be on the crew cab passenger side front. Uh, the rear doors are very similar, so they'll use all of the same techniques and similar mounting hardware. The only difference is it's going to be a little shorter and a little smaller, so you're going to find that the physical aesthetic might be slightly different, but all the processes you see here will be replicated no matter which door you're on. For the first step, we're going to have to remove a fascia that's behind the handle on any one of the doors that you'll be removing. This fascia panel requires the use of a pick, and there's a little corner here you can see that I'm pointing at. You're going to place the pick inside and pull that out. There's two other tabs there you can see, and that'll expose your 7 millimeter screw. There's several of these in the door, so we'll get the first one out here. Next up, we have to get the upper panel that contains the door handle holder as well as the window switches. This is the same for any of them. Basically, we're going to lift up the back edge here. You're going to see a tab, and I'm going to use one of those panel removers to depress the tab. Uh, what you can see here is the tab is going to require a little bit of strength to pull up once you've depressed it, and you can see what that tab looks like right here. Now to get the panel off the vehicle, we need to just unplug that window module. You can put that cable back inside the door panel here. We'll deal with that a little bit on the inside of the panel here in a moment. Next up, we have to get this other fascia off, and this one takes a little bit of effort. There are a number of tabs inside. When you look from the top down, you can see where you need to put the tool to help pry against those spots so as not to crack or damage that fascia panel. Uh, each of those pieces, simply using the panel remover and a little bit of leverage, should pop out. Just make sure you use that tool to distribute that load right where those pins are, but don't be afraid again when some of those little pins pop out and get stuck in the door panel. We'll have to address that shortly here, and that's a pretty common thing we're going to find with any of these quick-release type pops on the entire door panel. Again, let's take a close look at it. You'll see that some of those clips are still stuck in the door. We want to make sure we don't damage those, so we're going to use a set of needle nose here and depress the little center releases and pull those out of the door, making sure we don't damage them because we will have to reinstall these for future use. Next up, we have to remove the remainder of the screws, and on the bottom of the door, you'll find two 7 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and use the nut driver here to remove those. And you're going to find two more that are going to be located in the handle, and those are 7 millimeters as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove those two as well. With all of the screws removed, all that's left now is to pop the panel off of the door frame. And this, as you can see, can be done by hand. A firm grip and a quick pull is usually all it takes, but if you prefer to use the panel popper here, you can do the same. Look into the area, apply leverage, and pop it out. Now, this panel is made to completely pull straight out. However, I've always had difficulty doing that. So what you're gonna see me do here now is to pull up instead of out on that panel which is going to release the upper rubber seal to the window, letting the panel move completely up. So first things first here, we're gonna push that uh, lock mechanism down and then start that pulling out and up. And as you can see, it releases that panel. We have a couple things inside the panel we're gonna have to contend with. And first thing we're working with is the rod that goes up and down to the door to show the door is locked. And then we're gonna have to work with releasing the cable mechanism, which you can see here that attaches to the door handle. What you're gonna do is pinch that down and pull back. That'll release it from the locking position and then twist it around till the ball and the cable are released so that you can pop it straight up. All that's left now is the electrical and here is basically a quick release connector and that disconnects the lock and unlock button in the door panel. Now that completely releases the door panel from the door frame. So here we can do a couple of steps that I like to do now which is prepping the door to be reinstalled before I get down to doing what I'm here to do which is really pull apart the speaker. So the first thing you're seeing me pull here is the rubber window seal. Uh, that needs to pull up and out from underneath the plastic so that we can release these tabs. Now these tabs are the parts that make the door really hard to pop out. So what we're going to do here is use a set of needle nose to pinch the connector to remove it and get it out of the door panel. We have five of those clips and you're going to want to make sure that you don't damage them or lose them as we have to reuse all of them. Here's our door panel and as you can see now I've got a few of those pops that stayed in the door frame and those have to be removed and put back in the panel for final installation. So here I'm just double checking I have everything there and I'm gonna start by putting back those 
five clips in the proper holes on the upper area of the door to make sure that we get a nice good seal against the window. So if you take a closer look here, you'll see where each of these goes. There is a part of the upper seam that you can see has a gap. And that gap is where each one of those clips goes into. And we'll get all five of those back in the door. And when we're ready to do final assembly, we're gonna push the gasket between those clips and the metal door panel, making sure that it makes contact with the glass window. When we get to the edge here with the plastics, you may have to bow it up to get it inside that area and just press firmly to make sure that nothing comes loose and all the clips are firmly in place. And here we go. I've got my new speaker in, so I'm ready to do the reinstallation. And there's a couple things that we talked about before that we're gonna to need to do address, which one of them is the clips that stayed in the door that may have gotten slightly damaged. Be careful here. One, they can poke you pretty good if you're not paying attention. But two, we wanna make sure that they still work correctly. So carefully using some needle nose, grab those, pull them apart, and get them so that the clip locks back in place on the fascia panels. We're gonna to have to do this to as many of the clips as necessary to get them all back on that fascia panel. We only have a couple of other clips that got stuck in the door frame that we pulled out last uh, few steps ago. Uh, we need to reinstall those back onto the door panel to make sure we don't get any rattles. I have the upper one here and then that middle door jam one that was a white one uh, that I pulled out near the outside edge of the door. Now we can reconnect the cable that attaches to the handle. So we're gonna drop the ball in the slot Pull that neatly across the back and push the clip until it completely locks. All we have left now is the lock and unlock. We'll simply align that, push that into place and hit the lock mechanism. And we're gonna make sure that our window switch cable goes through the hole in the door and comes out the middle. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, we don't wanna forget that we have that lock rod that has to align. So it's got a little rubber grommet area there that it fits through. We wanna slide that through the hole. Once we have that set up, we're going to align the front edge. And once everything is aligned here, we can start to apply some force and get all of those pops to align. Starting at the top here, I just wanna make sure that I have the cable pulled out so it doesn't get stuck behind the door panel. And I'm gonna lightly tap around the door to make sure each of those pops locks the door panel in place. And we're just about done here with the installation. Just a couple more steps and we'll have everything back together. We have a couple of screws in the door that we have to get in first. Those are those two seven millimeters that go into the handle area. Those will hold all the stress when we're opening and closing the door. Once we're finished getting those in there, we wanna get that panel that we repaired all the clips on, align those to the holes, and then gently apply some force to reinstall that. Once that is in place, the last part we have is that fascia panel for the top where the window actuator switch is. We're gonna plug that in, and this part goes in first with the nose. It slides into a slot, and you should kind of feel that line when it goes there, and then apply a little force on the back here to snap that last clip in. We have the seven millimeter up top here at the fascia. Uh, that's a quick one to install once the door's all aligned. Once that bolt is in, we're gonna make sure that we don't forget there's two more seven millimeters here at the bottom. So let's get those going and pop that little fascia panel in. And that's just as quick as getting the two aligned and then pushing where you pulled it apart on the back edge. Thanks again for tuning into the channel. And if you like what you saw here or have any comments regarding that, please put those below. Also, if you've got anything else in the Colorado and Canyon community that you'd like to know about, please put that in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in and enjoying my travels with my ZR2 Bison.